Next week, we have our first guests. We have a lot to do still, but it's feeling more attainable than it was. So today we're at the campground building dome tents. Right here behind me is master builder Chris, who's about to crack into this next dome tent. The first step is to lay out the base pieces and connect the brackets, which are ultimately gonna get mounted to the deck. So everything gets tied together. And then it's a matter of taking all the different pipe sizes, which are one through 10 and building a series of triangles. And those triangles are different shapes and that'll ultimately create the dome shape. We built larger platforms so that we can have additional deck space. Uh, so this dome is a five meter diameter, diameter dome, and this will sit on top of the deck and uh, allow us to have some outdoor space and a staircase that goes up into it. The structure will take a couple hours to build, and then we have uh, a bunch of other stuff to do to the dome after the, the structure is up, including insulation, including windows and doors, and everything to make it a complete structure. That mess. So what's what is the trick actually? <laughs> is there is there a trick like highlighting each one as you go? If I find yeah, highlighting it makes it a little easier. Yeah. Keep track of where you're at. And is one person like is one person like are you keeping track of where everything's going and then they're like is that is that working well too? Yeah, yeah, yeah this is working pretty good too. So the process of building the frame, it does go really quick when you have multiple people. Some people keeping track of where the pipes are going and then other people getting them up top and basically fixing them. The challenge with building the dome is that there is a lot of bolting and unbolting because each joint has about six. There are a couple that have five, but almost all of them have six. And you're never gonna get all six in at one time because you're building up. So you've gotta bolt it you gotta undo it and then bolt it. And then when you get done with all six, that's when you cinch it up and get it nice and tight. And that's when the rigidity comes into play. So our dome has each of these poles labeled with a number. It's really challenging to see the actual digits here because they're pressed in. But you can see that's a seven, that one's an eight, a seven. And the way that the dome is shaped is that all the, the pipes have different configurations. Although they look very similar, very subtle differences in sizes can make the dome take shape. And that's how the geodesic dome structure has its strength as well, because the dome strength all puts pressure downwards and it creates a really geometric shape that can hold a lot of weight. So to get these tents set, it requires pulling everything over with ropes because it's, it's really heavy, but then also getting it getting it flush to the frame it takes a lot of pulling and twisting and pulling and each one you know is taking at least 30 45 minutes just to get that cover over and to get it situated in the way that it will look good but once they're covered with this outer canopy they're incredibly awesome looking and they're waterproof we have to install the other auxiliary window on the side which is a small circular window and then this window is going to get cut and the insulation is going to be cut away from it so it's going to be a really nice panoramic window but um, there's still a lot of work to do to get a tent from this to a finished product that people are going to live in, such as getting the air conditioning in, getting all the appliances, um, cinching it down, making sure it's all water and weather tight. But this is a really good first step in seeing it go from a frame to an actual thing that looks like a livable tent. Many hours later. So we got a ton done today. We got five domes enclosed, which is a great starting point. It doesn't mean the domes are done. We still have a lot of work to do, like installing the chimney, uh, actually connecting the canvas, the outer shell to the, to the frame. It's sitting on there nice and snug, but it has a lot of other lacing and adjustments to do. We also have to cut back the insulation and open up the window so that panoramic window that looks out into the forest and the, and the beauty of this nature um, can see the entire thing. So right now the insulation is sort of blocking it. But we're in a really good spot. I mean, as you can see, these are looking really, really good. They have uh, a lot of like wrinkles in them because over time they're gonna have to sort of uh, like, you know, cinch down even more and settle into place. And then they'll look like really nice white domes. Um, but I'm really happy with the configuration. The doors are all angled slightly out into Ferncrest. So when you open your door, you're not looking directly into your neighbor's tent. You're also not looking directly into the road. You're looking into sort of like 
the core of Ferncrest. And um, the size, the size is really nice too. They are on the smaller side of geodesic domes, but they're perfect sized for either a king bed or two queen beds. And uh, that means they're gonna stay really comfy. So either warm when it's cold outside or cold when it's, or cool when you have the air conditioning running when it's hot outside. So we have everything in place to get this done over the next week or so. It's really getting close as, as, as you know, getting into the dome tent construction was probably the biggest step that needed to take because there was a lot of fear both for myself and others about actually just taking a stab at that but once you actually got going and you started to assemble the domes they sort of went together and there was a lot of patterns that the the shapes and everything that was going on so by the sixth one they were really going a lot quicker than the first one the first one was like five times as long as the sixth one um, but come with me and i'll show you a few other things so this dome is definitely one of my favorites and uh, it's got the perfect view into the forest and what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to have a staircase here so we do have to add stairs and that'll go up onto the front deck this front deck here is really gonna be just for whatever people want it to be the back is the is the focal point but the front is where we might have some chairs uh, people can stage their luggage when they're coming and going um, you know if they want to be social with other people that's where they can be to hang out and, and say hi to other campers but uh, the staircase would basically be either here or here we got to decide the door is a nice glass and metal door so we got to clean it up but basically uh, you can't see through it but some light will come through which is nice uh, and then inside this is where a lot of the work still has to happen we have a lot to do when it comes to uh, lighting and electricity, the solar electricity that we're adding. That panoramic window will be much, much larger because the insulation is covering most of it. So the insulation is actually over here. So once that insulation is cut back, that window is gonna be absolutely gorgeous looking directly into the forest, especially once it settles and all those wrinkles come out, it's gonna be, it's gonna be one of the focal points of this entire property is these windows. Plenty of space for a king bed. Uh, this will be a really beautiful king suite, but it's also going to be good for two queens. So we're going to be able to fit two queens in here in three of the tents, and three of the tents are going to be uh, kings. We're going to have like a carpet, we're going to have a mini fridge in there, we're going to have a lot of nice stuff going on. And so here in the back you can see, this is where another little step down would be. And then you're going to have your fire pit, you're going to have a wood-fired hot tub, and then you can see the outline of the panoramic window. Again, all this is going to get cinched down, but the size of the panoramic window is really beautiful. And there's a curtain that goes inside, so people can close the curtain just like they would at home. But then when they wake up, they have the forest. So we got the domes built with the curtains hung. Big window cut back, looking really nice. Rich slaying the chimneys. <laughs> Every week seems like it's been big recently, but this was the biggest week yet of building a fern crest. When we started this week, there was nothing here. None of these tents behind me existed. And now we have six geodesic domes fully built. There's some things to do on the insides of them, but they are fully built. They're buck buckled down to the platforms. We have even like the new staircases that went in to go up to the decks and the doors are affixed. They look amazing. I really am so excited about this. I, if you had asked me about geodesic domes a year ago, first of all, I wouldn't know much about them. And second of all, I wasn't necessarily I'd say a fan of geodesic domes. I thought that they had a little bit of a, of a synthetic vibe to them. But now that I see them in a forest like this, in a natural setting, they actually have the most outdoors vibe possible, even more so than the crest tents, which I think are really cool, which are the more safari style tents. But I just love the geodesic domes. They're also incredibly structurally sound. They have, rigidity to them that I didn't even imagine existed. You can climb on them like a, a kid's jungle gym. It's actually why the shape is the shape that they are at playgrounds because you know you can climb on them, you could have 10 kids on them. Hopefully 10 kids do not go up on these domes, but they're pretty awesome. Next week, we have our first guests. We have a lot to do still, 
but it's feeling more attainable than it was. The thing that's really working against us now is landscaping, the weather, and really just getting all of the small details done. We have so many small things to do that the list just feels insurmountable because you can only do so many things with an individual and one person. But luckily we have a lot of great people. There's Rich right there. <laughs> we have Kevin blowing leaves over there by the playground, prepping that space to put in the, uh, the, the, the gravel sand pit for the kids. We got Sean and Chris putting in chimneys. We had Cody doing plumbing. I mean, man, we got a lot of good people here. And I, I think that's been the saving grace of the last few weeks is people have showed up in a big way. Now, could I use 10 more people? Certainly. I could use a lot more people to get this done because none of these tents have furniture in them. None of them are ready for guests. The store's not done. The bathroom's not done. But really at the end of the day, I think what I'm starting to accept and realize is that Ferncrest is gonna be an ongoing project for the next, I mean, heck, year, right? It's similar to how the Rex Hotel was, which we opened and it was really celebratory and we were really excited to open and welcome our first guests, but I felt halfway done. Like it was not complete by any means. And the guests though, didn't necessarily experience that. Some people were like, oh, you know, not all the units are open, but really at the end of the day, as long as that individual experience, that individual guest can experience, say Ferncrest, in the way that they want to experience it, which is they want direct access to the outdoors, they want to have a campfire, they want to have a comfortable quarters, then I think we're going to be in a really good spot. We're going to have everything that they need to experience a great stay and everything else, the vision that we have in our head that still has to come to fruition may not, may not be instantaneous. It may not be the way that we want it to be on day one. But the good news is, is that this is a big property right so we can have pockets of it that are really perfected right like the dome tents can be dialed in they can have the hot tubs assembled they can have the outdoor fire pits with you know the picnic tables which are getting delivered this weekend and that can be a complete experience this is what i love about the dome tents it's raining outside you got this window and you just look directly into nature the sound of rain hitting the top of the tent. It almost looks like a movie. <laughs> <laughs>